Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'd like to show you how to make a quilt called pop-ups. This uses fat quarters, and I have a bundle here that I like. It's all really soft neutrals. So my um, question here is, what will make a good contrast for all of these? So I've picked out quite a few different ones that I think might work for that contrast. The first is pretty subtle. It matches these pretty well, and that would make a much softer quilt than the cover shows. This one is nice. I like it because it, it's got interesting um, textures in the background there. Now that's extreme. There's a lot of contrast between these two, and I think that would look good. This will look most like the cover of the pattern. A lot of contrast, nice wood tone in the background. Now, here's a different color. This is a blue-gray. I do like that. It's a little bit softer. This is more solid. It's one of Hoffman's 1895s. That's a good choice. I think that might be my number one, but let's look at these others. The color in this is very nice. It matches really well but I think there's too much going on in it. This is another one. That would probably work, but it's a little bit too subtle. This would work. It's a nice taupey brown, but I really think that I am going to like this the best for these dark areas. This Cozy Quilt Designs pattern comes with five different sizes. I'm gonna make the twin size. So I'm gonna go ahead and iron up my fat quarters. We've got the accent here, and we won't worry about those borders till we get all the patchwork done. For cutting up your fat quarters, the pattern gives you two different diagrams for cutting, and that's because you may be using a one-way pattern. And depending on which way you want that pattern to run, you may want, if it's stripy, you may want them going up and down or sideways. So you can pick the appropriate diagram so that your design will be going the right way. Now I can't give you all the sizes for the cutting because it's not my pattern, but it's very clear how to make the cuts. I've got all the pieces cut out. Next step is to pull off what we need for our first block. So we need matching pieces. We need all of these the same, these strips. Then we need one of these that's different from that. So let's just take the next one down. We need one accent that's short, one accent that's long. We'll take all this over to the machine. Let me lay out the whole block. We're gonna start with this one. Put a small piece on the bottom and that one will go on the side. Then we'll add the accents to the top and the opposite side and then we'll finish off with one more piece of this and one more piece of this. Let's start here. The piecing for the blocks is very, very easy. I would have to say the most challenging part with the fabrics I picked is deciding which is the right side of the batik and which is the wrong side. Usually the wrong side will be a little more faded. Of course if you can't tell which is the right and which is the wrong it doesn't make any difference and you can just sew it from either side. I'm going to press all of the seam allowances away from the middle. And I don't think I'm even going to iron the block until it's all the way done. I'm just finger pressing, so I'm pulling the seam open a little, anchoring it with this finger, and then pulling my finger pad or my fingernail right down the seam. And that will flatten it enough for this kind of patchwork. I'm just going to keep adding pieces and checking the pattern as I go to make sure I've got them in the right spot. Once I have one block done, I will use that block 
to look at instead of the pattern because I find it's always easier to look at one that's the actual size and in the actual colors I'm making rather than looking at the pattern repeatedly. Last piece. So half of the blocks for the quilt will be made exactly like this. The other half are the same, but they're a mirror image. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all those blocks stitched up. I've got all the blocks done and we're ready to lay out the quilt. There is a table runner included in the pattern, so I wanna show you what that would look like. There's different ways you can arrange your blocks to get different patterns. So the table runner is just going to take four blocks like this and make a diagonal, and then we'll add another one on top of that. There's the table runner. It just uses four blocks of each orientation, four of this shape and four of that shape. For the quilt, we're going to start with this corner and build out the rest of it. And there's different layout options you can do. You don't have to do the one that's shown on the front of the pattern. Inside it gives you several different options. So let's see what we come up with. There, that's the layout I'm going to do. We've got some full rectangles, then we've got some partial blocks. It makes a nice pattern going down the diagonal of the quilt here. It's gonna be really easy to sew the blocks together because they're so nice and big. Then we just have to add a couple of borders and we'll get it loaded up on the quilting machine. I've got the quilt loaded up and now we need to pick a thread color. There's quite a few colors that would look good on here and as is the case with most quilts, there's not a right or wrong selection. There's just a matter of picking something we think we'll like. I do like the light gray. I don't think it's gonna show anywhere. The darkest one here, this blue, that will show in the light areas and it'll blend right in in our accent color. There's a lot of this dark ecru color. That'll show a little bit in the blue, probably won't show anywhere else. We've got a nice dark gray here. That'll just give us a hint of color, it doesn't show there at all. This is sort of a mushroom color here, and I think this one might be the best choice. Shows a little teeny bit, doesn't show much there. I think it'll show a little in the border, but it's gonna blend in very nicely. So that's what we'll use. For the quilting pattern, I wanted to use something abstract. The spirals are fairly evenly spaced here, big ones and little ones, but we've got some spirals in some of the batiks, and I think this will look really good on this quilt. I've got the pop-ups quilt all done. I really like how the contrast color, the accent here, makes a whole block here, then almost like windows or something going out in the landscape. It's very, very quick to make this. I made it in just a couple of days. It really sewed up very, very fast. The swirling pattern for the quilting, it doesn't take away from any of the patchwork at all. And I like, it's got some little swirls, got some big swirls. On the backing, you can really see these swirls there. And this is a 1895 batik called Hippo. It's got the same colors as in the top, but they're all mixed in on the back. And I used that for the binding also. 
72 by 96 it's a nice big quilt and I think the pattern does have five different sizes you could certainly add another border to make this one even a little bit bigger thanks so much for watching the video today we hope you enjoyed it and if you have questions leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer now at the end of every video we do a giveaway today's giveaway is this very scrappy log cabin this is one of the special kits that Matt cuts. So he cuts out all the pieces and they come in a little package and then I stitched 24 blocks together to make this quilt. We do sell the kits, but today you can win this finished quilt and it's very easy to enter. All you do is click the link right below this video that says giveaway. Put in your name and your email address and you might be the lucky winner. Now, if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.